Hi everybody, welcome to tonight's Fireside Devotional. Tonight we're going to be looking at 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to start by reading in verse 8. Just follow along with me all the way to verse 22, and then I'll let you know what verses we're looking at after that. So verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 8. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let us make a small upper room on the wall, and let us put a bed for him there, and a table, and a chair, and a lampstand. So it will be, whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there, and he turned into the upper room, and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi his servant, Call the Shunammite woman. When he had called her, he sh she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, What then is there to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived, and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her, and the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said to his father, My head, my head. So he said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And we're, verse 21, And when she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Now when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to push her away. Sorry, we jumped. Yeah, we're true. We jumped to uh, verse 27 there. Sorry about that. But Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me. So she said, verse 28, Did I ask a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Get yourself ready and take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer him, but lay my staff on the face of the child. Verse 30, And the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Now Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. Verse 32, When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands, and he stretched himself out on the child, and the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house, and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite woman. So he called her, and when she came into him, he said, Pick up your son. Verse 37, so she went in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground, and then she picked up her son and went out. And now I want to look at Second Kings chapter 8, jumping ahead, chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. And then uh, I'll let you know what the Lord put on my heart. Verse 1, then Elisha spoke to the woman whose son had restored to life, he had restored to life, saying, Arise and go, you and your household, and stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. So the woman arose and did according to the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household and dwelt in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the end of seven years that the woman returned from the land of the Philistines and she went to make an appeal to the king for her house and for her land. Then the king, king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, please, all the great things Elisha has done. Now it happened, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead to life, that there was the woman whose son he had restored to life, appealing to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed a certain officer 
for her, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the proceeds of the field from the day that she left the land until now. Now you might be thinking, why did I pick this verse? And it's funny, because I'm not just paging through the Bible, picking verses to do a, a devotional on. It's what I'm currently reading. So as I was reading this, the Lord just put it on my heart. As we read the first quite a few verses at the beginning, this woman had met, had seen Elisha, a man of God, coming through the city and fed him a couple times and then talked to her husband and said, let's do something really good for this guy. He's traveling. Let's make a place for him to be able to stay a night whenever he wants, whenever he's traveling, because he passes by here a lot. I mean, that's a huge blessing. I have used to travel quite a bit. Um, my brothers and I were in a Christian band. We used to travel all over the U.S. We've been to Africa. Obviously, we used to come to the U.K., which is why you see me here now. And um, we used to do a lot of traveling. And it was a blessing when someone would have us in their house to feed us and give us a place to sleep. I know exactly how Elisha feels here. You know, you're traveling by somewhere, and somebody says, hey, come here. Let me feed you. Let me give you a good place to sleep, and then you can be on your way. That's a huge blessing. But this lady did it because he went through there regularly. So she was planning on continuously blessing Elisha. And then, so the way I see it is this. She was actually blessing God. She was blessing a servant of God. Everybody knew that he served God. So she decided to bless a servant of God, which in turn meant she was blessing God. She was in, indirectly blessing the Lord by blessing his people, his person. And it took, if you think about it, it took a lot of faith and trust. You know, I mean, she built a new room for him. She was giving of the family's food for him. So she had to trust God to provide enough food for everybody. And obviously it costs money to build another room, put a bed in there, a lampstand, a table, a chair. I mean, you know, so she took, she took great measures to take care of the man of God. And what do we see here? So we jump forward to 2 Kings chapter 8. And we see, that, we see this. And the word I want you to, the, want you to uh, kind of like grab onto is the word honor. She honored the man of God, which in turn meant she was honoring God. So hold, remember that word honored, okay? So then we jump forward to 2 Kings chapter 8, and what happens? Elisha gave her a bit of insider advice. and was like, hey, you better head out of here. We're going to have a famine. And he told her where to go, you know? Head out of here. Seven years we're going to have a famine. Go somewhere where you're not going to get hit by this. So she took off for the land of the Philistines for seven years, the, the length of time the famine happened. When she came back, her land had been, you know, taken over. It had been handed off to someone else. So she goes into the king to plead back for what is hers. And just so happens that Gehazi, Elisha's servant, is telling the king about the very thing that happened to this woman and her son. The raising of the dead of her son. You know? So what do you see here? You see the king automatically. Boom. This is amazing. I'm seeing God's work right here in front of me. So he restores her land. Everything. And all the proceeds of the land for the last seven years. That's awesome. That's amazing. Now, does that just happen? No. That's God. That's God doing some major work. And what's God doing there? Remember the word honor. Okay? God is honoring her back. She honored God, so God is honoring her. Okay? And I don't think she ever had this intention. Let me honor God so he do some, does something for me. You know, that's the way we work in the world. Like, let, me, let me do something for you. Scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You know? you know, we're always cutting a deal. The lady wasn't cutting a deal. She was just giving of the Lord. She was giving to the Lord through his servant. So she honored God's servant. Let's remember that. And in turn, she was honored and blessed by God. Let's look at a couple of scriptures stating these facts. John chapter 12, verse 26 says, Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Hello. Obviously, we know in this, this is specifically talking about Jesus Christ. But I think it can all. We're also looking at a greater ver word of servant, not just Jesus Christ as the ultimate servant, but those who serve God, which is what Jesus did. Jesus came here and he served God's purpose, and everything that he did, said, thought. So we look at those as we turn to serve God, and as people 
honor us, not in the form of like, yay, let's honor him with accolades and banquets and paychecks and all this, but we, uh, people honor us by, by providing for us, helping us out, giving of their time to work alongside of us while we serve the Lord. God honors them. And let's also look at 1 Samuel chapter 3, ver chapter 2, verse 30. It says, for those who honor me, this is God speaking through Samuel, I will honor and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Basically, it comes down to this. The, the, what we're looking to learn here tonight is this. If you honor God, God will honor you. If you go to great lengths to honor God, no matter what the cost is, God will honor you and bless you. Will it all come on this earth? Possibly not. You might never see any, any return for it here on earth. But the return, the, the, the ultimate return is what you get in heaven for it. The accolades, the honor that you get in heaven. That's what we're looking for. So honor God here, not because of what you might get here. Honor God here because of what you're doing for God himself and what you will receive in heaven. Have a great night. Let's just close in a word of prayer. And let's try to honor God in everything that we do um, this next few days, the next week. Let's honor God in the way that we speak, in the way that we treat others, in the way that we s provide for his servants. Let's honor God. Lord, I thank you for today. Lord, help us to honor your people, and you through the honoring your people, Lord Jesus, just as the Shunammite woman did, not looking for anything in return, but in honoring you, she received much back. She received a son. She received her son being take, brought back from the dead. She received her land back and all the proceeds. Lord, you blessed her way more than she ever blessed Elisha. We thank you, Lord, for that example that she gave us, Lord Jesus, and that we can do the same. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.